Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I'm asking God to impact your life with this and my life so that we understand this in a way that we have never understood it before. You know, thoughts is just absolutely one of the most important things that we need to learn about. Because literally, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, that whatever you think, that's what you become. Now, I mean, just think about that. <laughs> whatever you think, that's what you become. Now, I don't, that doesn't mean that you can just think anything into your life that you want to think into your life. That gets over into humanism and That's taken a godly principle so far then that it becomes a sin. But the fact does remain that whatever God says we can have, if we don't get into agreement with him, we will never have it. <laughs> so we need to find out what the word says and we need to bring our mind, our thoughts captive unto the obedience of Jesus Christ. That's the way 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says it, is that we should bring every thought captive unto the obedience of of Jesus Christ. I like to say this, where the mind goes, the man follows. If you get your mind on a hot fudge sundae long enough, you're more than likely going to get it. Am I telling the truth? You think about it long enough. If you think about what somebody has done to you that has hurt you long enough, and you go over and over it in your mind, there's a real good chance you're going to tell them off. Or at the very least, the next time you get around them, you will not be able to treat them properly. I think one of the greatest revelations that any one of us can have is to find out that we can do something about our thoughts. That we don't have to just think everything that falls in our head, but we can choose what we want to think about. And I want you to listen to what I'm going to say because it's very important, this whole series. You can think things on purpose. And I think that we all need to have a think session every day. A think session where we just sit down somewhere and say, now I'm going to think about a few things here for a minute. And you need to purposely think about some of the things that the Bible tells you to think about. And as you do that daily, and then you begin to do it as you're driving down the road, and then you begin to do it early in the morning when you wake up, and then you begin to do it when you're taking a shower in the morning, it won't be long and you'll find that your life is changing so radically that it will just absolutely amaze you. No one is going to have a great life if they have lousy thinking. No one is going to have a great life. Now, you know, somebody out in the world that thinks all kinds of bad things, they may have money, they may be some kind of a famous person or something. But that's, you know, that doesn't constitute a great life necessarily. We always look at outward things and, you know, we all like stuff. But the truth of the matter is, is if we don't have peace and joy and right standing with God and good relationships and peace with ourselves and stuff like that, then really we don't have anything. Amen? What we think is very important to God. The Bible teaches us that it's the hidden man of the heart that he's concerned about. And when we grow in our walk with God to the point where we're willing to take responsibility for our inner life, for our thoughts and, and our attitudes and, and even our self-talk, how we talk to ourselves about ourselves. How do you talk to yourself about your past? How do you talk to yourself about your future? You talk to yourself all the time. I talk to myself all the time. But, but the point is, is what are you saying to yourself? Because what you're saying to yourself is affecting you. It's affecting what happens to you tomorrow and the next day, and it affects your relationships. And you know, no matter how long you walk with God, you're still going to have to confront what I call stinking thinking. I was combing my hair this morning, sitting in the bathroom, putting on makeup, fixing my hair. Just started thinking some stupid off-the-wall thing about somebody that I know, and just like... And you know, I, I, you know what I have to say sometimes? Just stop it. Why 
what is that all about? You, you, you cannot just think anything that falls in your head. Refuse to let your mind be a garbage dump for the devil. Amen? Now, there's three really different things that the Bible talks to us about our mind. First of all, in Colossians 3, verse 2, it says, set your mind and keep it set on things that are above. Now, setting your mind is probably one of the greatest things that we can learn because there's really not much hope of resisting temptation if you don't make your mind up ahead of time what you will do when you get tempted. Because you will get tempted. It's a fact of life. And so we need to think ahead of time things like, I am not going to gossip. I will not gossip. When somebody starts to talk to me about somebody else and it's gossip, I'm not getting involved in it. I'm not going to ruin somebody's reputation. I'm not going to offend the Holy Spirit. I am not going to gossip. Now, if you think that, then when you're tempted to gossip, you've already got a foundation there and that message that you've got recorded on the inside of you from thinking it will begin to play back to you and it won't be nearly as hard to make the right decision as it would have if you had not yet made your mind up what you would do when you got in that situation. I, somebody down here said it's good. I think that's very good. Because you see, if you wait until you're in the midst of a temptation and you've never really even given any thought about what you would do, now you've got your emotions fighting you and you're in the midst of trying to make your mind up while your emotions are having a fit. You need to make your mind up ahead of time what you're going to do. And of course, I could give you a hundred different examples, but I think you understand the principle. If there's something specific that you have problems with, then you need to think, I am not going to overeat when I sit down to eat. I am not going to eat four candy bars today. I am not going to drink a case of soda pop or whatever it is that you struggle with. I'm not going to look at that pornography on the computer. I, I mean on the, yeah, the internet. I'm not going to get into a wrong relationship. For some of us, it may be things that, you know, like, like gossip or something like that. For others, it may be one of those other things that I mentioned. I'm not going to hang out with wrong people that are poisoning my life. How many of you think that it would help you if you would start doing some thinking ahead of time and deciding ahead of time what you're going to do and not just wait to kind of see what you feel like when the temptation comes? All right. So Colossians 3 says, set your mind and keep it set on things that are above, not on things upon the earth, for you are dead and your life is hidden with God. In Christ. Now, another thing the Bible tells us to do in Romans 12, too, is to renew our minds. And renewing our minds is a continual process. To renew something and to keep it renewed, it's a constant, ongoing process. You can buy a new house, but if you never do anything to it, it won't be long and it'll be a pile of junk. You can buy a new car and it's pretty when you bring it home, but if we don't do anything to it, it's not very long and it's just a dirty mess full of all kinds of trash and so on and so forth. Well, the mind is the same way. You can't just, you know, think something right one time. You can't just study on the mind one time. Renewing your mind is a continual process. And Romans 12 says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, completely changed, by the entire, entire renewal of your mind. Don't even keep one or two areas of junky stuff that you hang on to and be proud of yourself because you've gotten rid of all these others, but you still just like to kind of mess around with this one thing. Because it's, it's hurting you. It's keeping you from the best that God has for you. Now, on the other hand, you don't need to be condemned if you still struggle with your thought life. What you need to do is just make sure that you're making progress. Just make progress. I don't like to make people feel bad if they haven't arrived. Paul said he had not arrived. But he said, I'm pressing on. And one of the ways I press on is forgetting what lies behind. 
So thank God we don't have to be guilty about yesterday's mistakes. We can ask God to forgive us, but we have to press on. And there is a pressing, a pressing. The thing that I like to think about is I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. You can be happy about your progress and not depressed about how far you still have to go. So renewing your mind is going to be a process. It's going to take studying the Word of God. It, it's going to take disciplining yourself to sit down and do some thinking on purpose. Even just preparing for these messages has provoked me to do more of that in the last week than what I would even normally do. And you may have to do things like write yourself notes. You might have to put up some notes around the house that say, have your think time today. You might have to put a note on the dashboard of your car so when you're driving to work, you've already got a note there, think these things. And you write down some of these things that I'm going to teach you this weekend that you need to think that will be life-changing. How many of you understand that you can think things on purpose? All right. How many of you need to do a whole lot more of it than what you do? All right. Now, there's another thing that the Bible tells us to do about our mind, and it says, gird up the loins of your mind. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, that's not a phraseology that we're accustomed to today, gird up, but I'm going to show you what it referred to. At least I'm going to try to. I grabbed this off the resource table right before I came out here. Let's see, let's see if this works. You know, in the Old Testament days or in the days when Jesus walked the earth, people wore stuff like this. They wore long skirts. Well, now, if they was in a hurry to get somewhere, you know, there's a very good chance you could get all tangled up in that and get yourself in a mess. So what they did when it was time for them to go to work, they literally would get it all here. <laughs> Come on, I want to show you what I'm talking about here. <laughs> hey, I do this just to teach you, so. And they, now listen, so they'd get it up here, and then that was, then they were, they had girded themselves so they were free now to be able to run their race or to get their work done or whatever it was that they were supposed to do. So when, when the Bible says, gird up the loins of your mind, what it means is to get all the junk out of your mind that's in your way that's going to keep you from running your race and having the victory that God wants you to have. Amen? So three things you need to do. You need to set your mind, keep it set. You need to renew your mind, and you need to gird up the loins of your mind because that's what keeps you ready for action. You got all the junky stuff out of your way, so now whatever comes along, you're ready to take the right action. I pray in Jesus' name that no matter how many messages you have heard on the mind, that God will do something special for all of us here this weekend. And we, this will not just be something that we hear and say, yes, I know that I need to think better. But I mean, I'm asking God to impact your life with this and my life so that we understand this in a way that we have never understood it before. Because I am convinced if I can help not only you in this room, but people watching all over the world by television, how to begin to think the way God wants them to think that they can begin to have what God wants them to have and be what He wants them to be and do what He wants them to do. And I think it's time for Christians to be really Christians so the world will stand up and take notice and know that we've got something worth having. Come on, give Him praise. So that's just kind of a little foundation. Now, Ten different kinds of, ten different things that I'm going to encourage you to start thinking on purpose. And like I said, you know, this is just kind of like a beginner's course because you can certainly add to this list. There's no way that I can teach on all the things that I would like to teach on. But I did try to pick ten things that I felt like had affected my own life in a pretty major way over the years that I've been serving God. So the first thing that I want to encourage you to think on purpose is this. I am in right standing with God. I have right standing with God. 
not wrong standing. I have rightness when I stand before God, not wrongness when I stand before God. Now see, if you get this, then you don't have to listen to that record that tries to play in your head that goes like this. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I don't know what's wrong with me. What's wrong with me? Come on, does anybody ever hear that? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Well, the devil loves it when we do that. And the world has taught us this. Well, there's something wrong with you because you're not like me. Well, there's something wrong with you because you like that and I don't like that. You're something, there's something wrong with you because you can't do this as good as I can do this. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. We have all these images out in the world that tell us what we need to look like and what we need to wear and how we need to do our hair and all these different things. And then we begin to think, well, what is wrong with me that I don't want to do that? What's wrong with me that I don't like that? What's wrong with me that I don't feel like that? What's wrong with me that my parents didn't want me? What's wrong with me that my parents abused me? What's wrong with me that I don't have as many friends as other people? And so it just blesses me no end to realize that God loves us so much and he hates so much for us to be tormented with those kind of ungodly feelings that the first thing that Jesus wants to give us is righteousness. He takes our sin and gives us his righteousness. Now we're going to look at some scriptures together. It's going to take a little time, but I want you to get this. 2 Corinthians 5, beginning in verse 17. I can honestly tell you that I used to think almost continually, what is wrong with me, what is wrong with me? And I, I would say that I never think that now. I never think that now. And it's not that I don't do things wrong, but you have to learn the difference in your who and your do. See, you, 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 you're in the family of God now. You're a blood relative. Say, I'm in the family. See, you're a child of God. And so, you know, my children always have right standing with me, even though they don't do everything right. They're still in the family. I would still help them if they needed help. I don't like all their choices, I don't like everything they do, but I sure do love them, and I don't kick them out just because they make a mistake. Matter of fact, especially if I knew that they were doing the best they could, then I probably wouldn't even, even get aggravated about it. And so God knows our heart, and He knows that we're on a journey, and He knows that we have to have time to renew our minds. He knows that we have to have time to learn, and I want you to get it this weekend that as long as you're on your way and you're making progress, you don't have to be as glorious as somebody else you know. You just have to be where you're at for this time in your walk with God. And as long as you want to do better and you're pressing toward doing better, you don't have to feel bad about yourself and compare yourself with somebody else. Not all of you are sure. Can I tell you something? Feeling bad about yourself only impedes your progress. It doesn't help it. You stay so busy feeling bad about what you did wrong yesterday that you don't have any strength and energy to do anything right today. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. Now, what that means is, is that you, you become new inside in your spirit man. You don't maybe look any different in the mirror and you may still have some of the issues in your soul, some wounds and hurts and some bad thinking patterns and still some rebellion and some things like that. But Inside, where it really counts, you have become a brand new creation. You're like new spiritual clay, so to speak. The seed, capital S, of God has been planted in you, and that seed is Jesus Christ. And he is the seed of God. So the seed of everything that God is is in you. The fruit of the Spirit is in you. You have righteousness in you. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, so you have the ability to love in you. Having all the fruit of the Spirit, you have patience. You may not walk in it, but you have it. 
I'm still working on that one myself. <laughs> but seeing some improvement, I'm happy about that. You have, uh, you have discipline. Because the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And the Amplified says a spirit of discipline and self-control. You don't need to say, I can't control myself, because you do have self-control. It is in you. You say, well, what is my problem then? Well, part of the problem is, is you don't believe you got it. See, in God's economy, you believe first and then you see. But in the world, they say, well, if you can't see it, then they're not going to believe it. Everything in God's economy is basically backwards and upside down from the world's economy. The world says, if you ever want to have anything, be stingy, get everything you can, grab everything you can, keep everything you can, save, save. And the world says, if you want to have more, give away some of what you got. Tilt, 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 tilt. How does that work? That doesn't compute. The Bible says that we don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith, and faith is about what we can't see, but what we know in our heart. And see, the reason why this is so important, like God would never expect me to be patient if he didn't give me patience. <laughs> he would never expect me to love you if he didn't put love in me so I had some love to give you. He doesn't expect me to be joyful unless he gives me joy. He doesn't expect me to be peaceful unless he gives me peace. So literally, when we receive Christ as our Savior, we receive the ability to do everything that God wants us to do. But it comes to us in a seed form, and we know that seeds must be watered to grow, and the Bible says that we are to water them with the water of the Word. Are you getting this? So, I've got a seed of patience in me, and if I will study what the Bible says on patience, and study it, and study it, and study it, I'll begin to manifest a little bit more of it, 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 and pretty soon the day will come where maybe I don't, I don't have that much of a problem with that anymore. Some people are stronger in some things. By nature, my husband is more naturally patient than I am. One of the weaknesses of the type A personality is impatience. But I refuse to just accept, well, that's just the way I am because I know the Bible says that that's not the way I am. I don't feel condemned when I don't behave as patiently as Dave does, but I'm not just going to settle in and say, well, I'm just impatient or, well, I'm just not disciplined or, you know, I'm just not a very happy person or, you know, I'm just one of those people. I have a hard time you know, not losing my temper or, you know, those kind of things. We got to quit making excuses for bad behavior, bad behavior and realize that we are new creatures in Christ. We've all got new spiritual clay on the inside of us. We're on a journey. God changes us from glory to glory as we stay in his word, we see his image and we're transformed into his image from glory to glory to glory. And I don't know about you, but I think it's a very exciting journey. I don't know, know why we have to get so upset because it takes a little while to manifest being what you know God wants you to be. You know, I've got it, and you've got it, and if we keep believing it long enough, eventually we will see it. First a little bit, then a little bit more, 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 and then every once in a while you feel like you backslide for a while. You have a year where maybe the crop's not so abundant. <laughs> but if you don't give up, you just keep planting, you just keep planting. Things get better and better and better. See, if you can understand that God is not mad at you, that you have right standing before the throne of God because of what Jesus did for you, that he sees your heart, and he's not mad at you every time you make a mistake, he's not there with a club ready to beat you over the head or put you out of the family, then what happens is you can relax and the love of God will bring you into wholeness. But if you feel all the time that you've got to perform perfectly in order to have the love of God, then you're just going to be on this works trip that leaves you worn out all the time and everything becomes about what you can do rather than what he did. 
And it's not about what we can do. It's about what He did and what He does through us. Whatever we do right, God should get the glory. Well, I like to say where the mind goes, the man follows. What that means is we think a thing first and then we take action. So we must think things on purpose and stop thinking about just whatever falls into our minds. You can change the direction of your life by doing your own thinking on purpose and not just thinking whatever happens to fall into your brain. Insurgency have gone around Iraq, persecuting Christians, forcing them to leave their villages, their homes, their businesses. Many of those families have seen their children abducted, their husbands being killed right there in front of them. The Iraqi Christians are persecuted intentionally in Iraq. So all the families are leaving. The majority has come to Lebanon because they feel safe, because there's a big Christian community. When we looked around, uh, and uh, so the need uh, of the Iraqis, we felt the Lord is leading us to the target this group of people for the love and compassion we can provide. Hand of Hope was the first ministry to come alongside with us. Hand of Hope said, well, we want to be the hand of Jesus to the broken world of Lebanon. And a children program when kids come and learn about Jesus and go back home and they sing what they have learned, the worship songs, the families, they start asking questions. Why are kids so happy and joyful again? Why do they have their smiles back again? Because in Iraq, the kids stayed home 24-7. They're not allowed to leave home, to play, to have fun because they're scared of car bombing, of kidnapping uh, for ransom. So here they're finding their joy again and it's exciting for us. Joyce Meyer makes this happen. Joyce Meyer uh, supports the Heart for Lebanon Iraqi project. So all the food we buy, uh, if it was the snacks, the lunch, the trips we do, the camps, the retreats, all of that, and alone we cannot do it because it's a big burden and it's high expense. And uh, they want to help us bless the Iraqi refugees by that. So we feel cared and loved by that as well. Word je wel eens bevangen door negatieve gedachten? Kun je ze niet meer van je afschudden? Laat je gedachtenwereld geen geestelijke schroothoop worden. Joyce Meyer heeft hierover een boek geschreven. Kracht in je denken. Want onze gedachten bepalen wie wij zullen zijn. Bestel het boek Kracht in je denken. 12 power thoughts voor de strijd in je denken nu. Via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel... 026 20 22 100. Joyce Meijer die is toch van tv? Wat doet ze nog meer? Ze schrijft boeken. Ik hou niet zo van lezen. Er zijn ook dvd's. En wat nog meer? Themaboekjes, mokken. Hé, hey, dat kan ik allemaal niet onthouden. Daarom is er de Joyce Meijer info- en productbrochure. Met een overzicht van alle boeken en dvd's. Had dat dan meteen gezegd? Die kan je online bekijken of bestellen. Kosteloos. Met alle informatie over de dagelijkse overdenkingen, Facebook, nieuwsbrief. Niet slecht. Bestel nu ook de Joyce Meyer info- en productbrochure. Via joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure of telefonisch. Via 026 2022 100. Super.